It's now been seven races since AlphaTauri fired Nick DeVries after a pretty unfortunate F1 career for him, if you can even call it that. It seems weird that a Formula 2 and Formula E world champion would come into F1 and struggle so much, but clearly he did, and it's cost him dearly. Since DeVries was fired, the performance of the AlphaTauri has increased quite a bit, going from a car that would rarely finish above P15 to a car that can, on occasion, score points. I think it's easy to forget just how bad the AlphaTauri was earlier this year, and the fact that DeVries wasn't actually that far off Sonoda, because the team made it seem a lot like DeVries was the reason they were failing, despite having clearly a below average car. Fortunately for Nick, there are plenty of other opportunities available to him than just hanging around the F1 paddock, and I'll get into those in a little bit. So, what's next for Nick DeVries? Well, before we get into that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, NordVPN. I'm going to start pilot training early next year, and as part of my course I'm going to be moving abroad. Now, I usually watch Formula 1 on the Family Sky Sports subscription, but this is only available in the UK. I don't want to have to pay for F1 TV Pro if I can help it, and that's where NordVPN comes in. With just a click of a button I can change my virtual location to the UK, meaning I can still watch live Formula 1. And that's not all. I recently got into a show called Manifest on Netflix, which, if you haven't seen already, I highly recommend it. Strangely, it's only seasons 1 and 4 available in the UK, with 2 and 3 behind a paywall on Amazon Prime. In Canada, Manifest seasons 1 to 3 are available on Netflix, so I can just turn on the VPN, connect to one of Nord's servers in Canada, and keep watching. And for those of you in Canada, just change your location to the United Kingdom and you can watch season 4. Netflix is obviously not a fan of people using VPNs, but Nord has you covered, and they continuously update their service to ensure that we can keep watching. But NordVPN isn't all about watching things you're not allowed to. Its built-in threat protection keeps you safe from malware, trackers and adverts, meaning whatever you do online you can do with confidence. So to turbocharge your online security with the world's fastest VPN, use my link nordvpn.com slash John Warren to get 4 months for free when you take out a 2 year plan. And if you're not happy, then you have 30 days to change your mind thanks to their money back guarantee. You literally can't go wrong. Now let's get back to the video. So, was Nick DeVries actually that bad? In the opening round in Bahrain, Nick qualified 7 tenths behind Yuki Tsunoda, meaning he'd start 19th and Yuki would start 14th. Come the chequered flag, Nick was 30 seconds behind Yuki, which wasn't great, but it wasn't the worst for a driver who was basically new to F1. However, Helmut Marko didn't think so. After the race, he told the media that Nick needed to step things up a gear, which was just crazy to be saying about anyone after just one weekend, especially given it was his first full weekend in a terrible car. In Saudi Arabia, Nick was 3 tenths off Yuki in qualifying, and finished 10 seconds back, which was a huge improvement, especially driving on a track that he'd never been on before. Despite making it to Q2 for the first time in Australia, Nick's pace wasn't great all weekend. In the race, he was comfortably the slowest of all 20 drivers, nearly half a second a lap slower than Yuki, and the issues were compounded when he was taken out by Logan Sargent after the red flag. And with Sonoda scoring the team's first points in the same race, this was one to forget. Sadly, the Azerbaijan Grand Prix wasn't much better for Nick. In fact, it was probably worse. He crashed out of qualifying for the Grand Prix, qualified last for the sprint, 7 tenths back from Sonoda, and crashed out of the Grand Prix after just 10 laps. Not his best work. Oh, and Sonoda scored points, again. In Miami, Nick outqualified Yuki by 1 tenth. However, in the race he was on average 3 tenths a lap slower than Yuki, meaning come the chequered flag it was Sonoda 11th, De Vries 18th. At this point, questions were starting to be asked, and arguably it was right to do so. This was a proven race winner and world champion, struggling in Formula 1 after an impressive debut the previous year. Don't let the result in Monaco fool you. While Nick finished ahead of Yuki, he was running behind him for most of the race, and would have finished there as well were it not for Yuki having a braking issue in the last few laps, which cost him loads of places, including the one to De Vries. To cut a long story short, after Monaco, Nick didn't finish ahead of Yuki again, and by the summer break, he was out of a job. Was he really as bad as people make him out to be? No, of course he wasn't. He did just as well as any F1 rookie would have done in a terrible car, and while he was no Lewis Hamilton, he was hardly as bad as Nikita Mazepin was. So for me, I think firing him so soon was unfair. A couple of weeks ago, it was announced that De Vries had signed for Mahindra Racing to return to Formula E in 2024, with testing starting this month. Obviously, this is great news for him, because he's previously been very successful in Formula E, and I'm sure the series would be glad to have him back. It's no secret that driving in Formula E and Formula 1 are different, as the cars are entirely different to each other. This will be Nick's first taste of the Gen 3 Formula E car, which are very different in performance to the Gen 2 he'd be used to, but the racing format will be the same, ditto the tracks. 
So with that considered, how will 2024 go for Nick? The Mahindra car wasn't great for the 2023 Formula E season as the team struggled with the powertrain, and 2024 is set to be a development year for them before a supposed big return in 2025. For Nick, this means his feedback will be valuable in improving the car, and this is something that he was praised for at AlphaTauri, which I'm sure is part of the reason Mahindra chose to sign him. In the past, Mahindra have been a solid upper midfielder in Formula E, but they've slipped back in the last few years and they've been a backmarker team for a while now, with their worst season ever coming this year when they finished 10th in a championship, only ahead of ABT Cupra. With no regulation change between years, it's hard to see Mahindra becoming a top team in the offseason, and so if you're a Nick DeVries fan, prepare to be disappointed. Commenting on his new contract, DeVries said, I'm particularly excited about the future plans for the team. The basis is already strong, and the team has all the attributes to succeed. I believe going forwards we'll be able to extract even more potential from the project and the organisation, so to be a part of that process was very appealing to me. Coming back to Formula E will feel like coming home. I've been part of the Formula E family for three seasons, I know everybody very well. I'm looking forward to being back in a familiar environment, and to be back somewhere where ultimately I've always enjoyed my racing. It's clear then that Nick has his sights set on a long-term future with the team, which will hopefully bring him and them to the front of the grid. But if Formula E doesn't go to plan, then another potential racing series he could move to would be the World Endurance Championship. In fact, he had signed to race for Toyota Gazoo Racing this year, driving Weck's fastest car, and there were rumours floating about regarding a seat in 2024 after he lost his F1 seat. In the past, De Vries has been fairly successful in endurance racing, taking three wins in the LMP2 class, two in ELMS, and one in WEC. I'm sure if he wanted to step away from Formula E, there would be plenty of endurance teams who would want him in their lineups. And what about Formula 1? Is there a chance we could see Nick De Vries back in the sport? Well, I don't really think so. Well, not entirely his own fault, I think the Alpha Tauri situation has done too much damage to his reputation in the sport. And while he has previously been linked to Mercedes, Williams, Aston Martin and McLaren, I don't think there will be a spot for him at any of those teams. Because they all seem to be pretty happy with their current drivers, and in the case of Williams and Mercedes, they have a good selection of drivers in F2 and F3, who would probably be more likely to get a contract if one came up. Of course, these things change quickly in F1, and while today there's nothing available, tomorrow something else might be the case. But for now, I think Nick DeVries has a secure future in Formula E, and given his past success, I'm sure he'll eventually return to winning, hopefully taking Mahindra with him to the top step. I'm sure the way that things played out for him in F1 will have knocked his confidence a lot, and so we may find that Nick takes a little while to find his feet again in the sport. But after all, form is temporary while class is permanent, and the fact he struggled in F1 but succeeded in Formula E doesn't necessarily mean the drivers are worse in Formula E. They're just different cars, and so drivers will naturally be better at driving one than the other. But what do you think the future holds for Nick? Will he stay in Formula E, or is there something else on the horizon for him? Let me know in the comments. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring, and if you want to see more from me, then make sure to subscribe if you aren't already. And as usual, I'll try to respond to all your comments on the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all later.